today's topic is structure of atoms now i am going to give a brief introduction about this topic so atoms are the fundamental building blocks of matter so here first of all i would like to explain what do you mean by atom and where the atom word is derived from the word atom has been derived from the greek word atomio which means uncuttable or non divisible so this idea has been remained for very long time this idea was by the given by the scientist dalton the dalton scientist he given that atomic theory and he proposed the matter is composable of small indivisible particles called atoms he successfully explained law of composition law of proposition and conversion of mass but he failed in explaining the subatomic particles subatomic particles means electrons protons and neutrons in 20th century atom can be further divided into subatomic particles in 20th century scientists proposed that the atom can be further divided into subatomic particles like protons electrons and neutrons so now i am going to explain the discovery of the electron in 1830 michael faraday showed that if electricity is passed through a solution of an electrolyte chemical reactions occurred at the electrodes means uh, electricity means current when it is passed through a solution of an electrolyte chemical reactions occurred at the electrodes it means uh, electrodes means uh, anode and cathode some chemical reactions occurred chemical reactions which is based on the principle of like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other so which results in the liberation and uh, deposition of matter at the electrodes when the current is passed through a solution of an electrolyte so this is uh, michael faraday explained in 1830 but in mid 1850s many scientists mainly faraday began to study electrical discharge in partially evacuated tube means cathode ray discharge tube now i am going to explain what do you mean by cathode ray discharge tube and uh, what uh, what is this experiment so this is the uh, figure of cathode ray discharge tube this uh, cathode ray discharge tube uh, where it is uh, uh, made up of uh, glass okay and this uh, cathode and anode these are the electrodes uh, this is cathode and this is the anode so which is uh, made up of the thin metal pieces and uh, these two electrodes are connecting to the high voltage when we are applying uh, this high voltage and by maintaining a very low pressure stream of electrons can stream of particles can move from cathode to anode like this stream of electrons move from cathode to anode so uh, by we can uh, adjust that uh, a uh, very low pressure means by adjusting the evac evacuation tube so whatever happening inside this glass tube we can't uh, observe in this so that uh, uh, so i have explained this particles moving in the tube from negative electrode to the positive electrode these are called cathode rays or cathode ray particles so whatever happened in the cathode ray discharge tube we can't observe so that um, this is a cathode ray discharge tube with perforated anode so in this cathode ray discharge tube with perforated anode what is happening which here also consists of same cathode and anode these are the electrodes and which is connecting to the high voltage as shown in this figure but inside this uh, there is a fluorescent coating means Uh, here why we are using this fluorescent coating which is nothing but uh, we are here using zinc sulfide means uh, the flow of current from cathode here the cathode and uh, which will uh, further move to the anode this can be checked by making a hole in the anode and uh, coating the tube behind anode with phosphorin material called zinc sulfide so when these rays means cathode ray are passing through the anode which is strike the zinc sulfide so that a bright spot can be created or when it is it is developed so now what i am going to explain here means so 
as shown in the figure when what i have shown that cathode ray discharge tube without perforated anode so whatever happening inside the glass we can't observe but we know that the electrons are moving from cathode to anode but we have to know that whether electrons are moved from uh, like cathode to anode so that uh, to know that the cathode ray discharge tube which is the anode uh, behind the anode the fluorescent coating is made by applying the high voltage particles are moving from cathode to anode so that uh, a bright spot is developed so by this experiment the result of these experiments means so first of all i have explained that cathode ray start from the an cathode and move towards the anode so that can be observed by uh, fluorescent uh, fluorescent coating But whatever what is happening if the uh, electric or magnetic field is absent means the rays travel in a straight line so so if the electric field or magnetic field is present the rays may be deviated that i will explain in the next talk. so the cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles these are called electrons so this is the discovery of electrons so characteristics of the cathode rays means electrons which is nothing but they don't depend upon the material of the electrodes and the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray tube so this is the result of this experiment and uh, from this experiment he concluded that electrons are basic constituent of all the atom so this is the uh, this is the conclusion of this experiment and the next is charge to mass ratio okay this is the next concept charge to mass ratio in 1897 british physicist the scientist he is uh, j j thomson measured the ratio of electrical charge to the mass ratio of electron by using cathode ray tube i have already explained what do you mean by cathode ray tube and what is happening inside the cathode ray tube and uh, that is uh, the discovery of electron so charge to mass ratio so that i can explain as shown in this figure and i will show it and this is the figure here same which consists of the electrode cathode and anode so which is connected to the high voltage here which consists of this is the magnet and this is the negative and this is the positive side this is the fluorescent screen what we are what he is using to determine the charge to mass ratio of electron so i will explain the de uh, detail of this uh, figure in detail so thomson uh, when uh, so here uh, when electric field is applied uh, electrons when electric field is applied uh, electrons are moving from cathode to anode okay and these electrons are deviated from their path and hit the cathode ray tube at point a here so the deviation the cathode to anode it will go like this and then the deviation takes place at the point a in the presence of electric field and what is happening in the in the presence of magnetic field means same high voltage here applying so the particles are moving moving from the cathode to anode and they will be deviated at point c this is when the magnetic field is present and when both both are absent when both magnetic field and electric field are absent so they move in a straight line so i have explained in the in this the result of this experiment i said that in the absence of electric or magnetic field these rays travel in straight lines so, so this is uh, proved in this block diagram yes so when cathode to anode so when high voltage is applied in the absence of both magnetic and electric field so they move in a straight line then next is amount of deviation okay i have said that uh, the deviation occurs when the electric field is present and magnetic field is present so what is happening in the uh, when the uh, what means uh, what is uh, the deviation depends on uh, what means so it depends on magnitude of the negative charge on the particle 
and the second one is the mass of the particle and the third one is the strength of the electric or magnetic field so first is the magnitude of negative charge on the particle uh, magnitude of negative charge on the particle means uh, greater the magnitude of the charge on the particle greater is the interaction with the electric or magnetic field means when the uh, magnitude is higher so greater is the interaction with the electric or magnetic field and thus greater is the deflection this is the first first case and the second case is which is the mass of the particle which depends on mass of the particle when the uh, when there is a lighter the particle and greater the deflection and the third one is the strength of the electric or magnetic field the amount of deviation depends upon the strength of the electrical or magnetic field the deflection of electrons from its original path increases with the increase in the voltage across the electrodes or the strength of the magnetic field yes the deflection increases when the voltage across the electrodes increases so that he considered that the value of uh, e by me uh, the electron uh, charge to mass ratio is 1.75882 20 to 10^-11 coulomb per kg where m is the mass of the electron in kg and e is the magnitude of the charge on the electron in coulomb so this is the amount of deviation depends on what parameters so the next is i have i have explained the subatomic subatomic particles are electrons protons and neutrons but i have already explained the discovery of electron now i am going to explain the discovery of protons and neutrons so in this discovery of protons and neutrons the the characteristics of these positively charged particles uh, means I, i am going to explain the uh, positively charged particles depends on the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray tube uh, which is uh, having the characteristics of totally opposite to that of the negatively charged particles i have explained that uh, whatever happened in the negatively charged particles means electrons the electrons are not depend upon the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray tube but here positively charged particles depends upon the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray tube so the second one is the charge to mass ratio depend on the gas from which these particles originate so here the charge to mass ratio depend upon the gas from which these particles originate the third one is the behavior of these particle is opposite to that observed for electron yes by observing only we can by observing these two characteristics we can say that the behavior of this particle is opposite to that observed for electrons so this is the about proton and neutron and so what do you mean by proton and what do you mean by neutron so the smallest and lightest positive ion obtained from the hydrogen and it is called protons so very smallest and lightest positive ions are called protons then what do you mean by neutrons when electrically neutron particles having a mass slightly greater than that of the protons means they are called neutrons so i has whatever i explain means electrons and then protons and neutrons the discovery of electron discovery of protons and discovery of neutrons so what do you mean by electron what do you mean by proton what do you mean by neutrons so this is about the proton this is about the neutron the second next, next is 